action. 30 years ago, the American dream for the American man was to be married with children. Have you ever seen the show Married with Children? Al Bundy was the stereotypical male of the early 90s. He graduated high school. He had a regular job. What, what was his job? I'll have your jobs for this. Fine, if we can trade for what's in your fridge. <laughs> Hal Bundy was a shoe salesman, a lady shoe salesman. He worked at a lady shoe store. He had a pretty hot wife, like his wife was pretty decent looking. She had red hair and big old boobies and he had two children and a dog. How in the world did that man afford a house and take care of a family on one salary? That was the narrative for the American man in the early 90s, that we could graduate high school, go work a regular job and we could afford a home and have a family. What happened to that dream? What happened to the American dream for the American man? I'll tell you what happened. We became complacent. The American man stopped fighting for his freedoms. He stopped fighting for his family. We allowed the government and media to completely dictate our lives to us. The biggest secret about men, the most powerful thing about men is we got nuts and those nuts produce testosterone. And that testosterone is like a superpower. It flows through your veins. It's like liquid strength. It's like liquid courage. It gives you the ability to do anything. But instead of using our God-given right to be strong, bold, courageous men, to be heroic in our, in our society, we've been brainwashed to think that being strong and powerful is toxic. There is nothing toxic about being powerful. You know what's toxic? Being weak, <laughs> not fighting for freedom. That's toxic. Allowing any other entity to govern your thoughts, to govern your actions, that's toxicity. And I'm asking you to fight back against these bad ideas. We've completely changed the narrative of what it means to be a man in America. And I want you to be a powerful person. How do you become a powerful person? By telling a better story. Institutions don't dictate anything to the American man. The American man dictates to the institutions what's going to happen. We look right now, we got all these companies making a whole bunch of money, but that's not being reflected in the, in the pockets of American men. Why is that? Because men have chose, instead of being disagreeable, we've become agreeable. In 30 years, we've had the gay revolution. Hell yeah, gay marriage is legal in America. It only took 30 years. But in that exact same 30 year time, our politicians were fighting for the sexual revolution, but they were not fighting for a labor revolution. We have all these advancements in technologies. Companies are, are bigger than they've ever been. Apple is $2 trillion, almost $3 trillion. All these companies have gotten as big as they possibly can, and the CEOs and all the executives and all the stockholders are making more money than they ever have in history. But where's your money? Hey, dear American man, why won't you fight for your money? Why won't you fight for a labor revolution so you can become powerful? Powerful in America. I have to negotiate for myself. I have to walk in there and say, show me the money. Hey, this is how much it costs to have a house. Show me the money. This is how much it costs to have a family. Show me the money. This is how much it costs to drive a car. Show me the money! And if my check doesn't reflect the cost of living in America, then what the hell am I going to work for? Why am I showing up every day and clocking in and doing work for this company when I ain't got nothing? How can the American man, how can the American person be free if you don't own anything? This is the most important question. I can't be free if I ain't got no place to stay. If my company can dictate to me what I can say, what I can think, or what I can do, then I'm a slave to this company. And if I'm a slave to this company, by default, I become a slave to this nation because this uh, America's passing legislation that's working against the American man. I'll tell you one thing about the Democratic and Republican parties. There is no party in America that represents the economically challenged or the politically disenfranchised. There is not a political party that represents you, man. When we talk about politics, politics is simply negotiating resources. And dear men, if you're not negotiating, you're losing. I got men right now in my life they sit there, all they want to do is say, oh, I'm supposed to listen to a woman. I'm supposed to do what a woman tells me to do. No, you're supposed to go and be powerful. You're supposed to build, be reckless. You have to create chaos in this society so you can be unpredictable. That's the only way that we can challenge power is by being unpredictable. They know where we're going to go. They know what we do. They know what we're thinking. They know what we're eating. Google has all of our information. And the only way that you can combat something that knows all your information is to be unpredictable. I don't think this system is predicting that the American man is going to wake up to, oh, shit, I got to go be powerful. I got to go kick some ass. I got to tell the American government. 
I got to tell my company, I don't care who I work for, Uber, Walmart, Amazon, whatever the company you work for, I'm not going to kiss your ass no more. I'm not no bitch, and I'm finna fight back. There has to be a labor revolution in America. There has to be a masculinity revolution in America. Men have to reach down into their pants, grab their nuts, and say, holy shit, I'm a man. I got some balls. <laughs> hey, the only thing that matters in any society in the history of the world is power, and men are powerful. And so your God-given American duty is to go be powerful, motherfucker. The greatest American alive, goddammit. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.